Hey everyone, it's Sevi. The Brawler Detective Hazo is the latest addition to our 4 star animal roster and thanks to early access, I've been given a chance to investigate just how good Hazo is as the first fist fighting catalyst user. In this video, I'm going to share my review of him as well as my guide on his talents, gameplay, artifact build, weapons, and team comps. I'll also be basing this review on a C0 Hazo since I want to first experience what he has to offer on his base kit alone. Alone. Without further ado, let's crack the case of Hazo. Hazo is an animal catalyst user whose primary role is an on-field DPS driver. He does animal damage through his attack combos, skill, and burst, which are also meant to swirl elements for additional reaction damage. He's also geared to be an elemental resistance shredder by using the 4-piece Viridescent Venerer set. Many see him as a counterpart of Sucrose, which is a fair comparison since they're both 4 stars with overlapping functions. However, you'll probably suspect there are some noticeable differences as well, which I'll touch on as we go along. Let's see what his kit does. Starting off with the most fun part about Hazo's kit are his normal attacks and charged attacks. I'd say this is the most unique and entertaining part of his playstyle. Despite being a catalyst user, he engages in battles with his fisticuffs, planting his foot on enemies' faces with animal damage. For some, this would be your main selling point and I can see why. It took me some getting used to but once you get the hang of it, I found it entertaining to discombobulate enemies with his fists of fury. Like Sucrose, this is what makes him a great on-field animo driver of his teammates' skills. His fast attacks are great for proccing abilities like Beidou's Chain Lightning, Singcho's Rain Swords, and Yelan's Dice Attacks. Additionally, their normal and charged attacks are animo damage, so they can apply elements and swirls simultaneously simultaneously while driving. It is riskier gameplay though since you're in hug range of enemies unlike Sucrose who can at least attack from a range, so it comes up more to player preference if they prefer Hazo's fisticuffs. I strongly advise you to do his test run and get a feel first if you like his gameplay. There's one more important mechanic to take note of about his attack combos, which is the best combo for triggering swirls. Hazo's ICD and animation time on his attacks can be optimized to trigger as many swirls in a short amount of time. This is to deal lots of swirl damage, reaction damage, and collect declension stacks. You can see he has a 5 hit normal attack sequence and charged attack which costs 25 stamina. From my findings, you can use these common combos. An N1C animation can take 1 second or 60 frames. An N4C combo takes about 2.6 seconds, then doing an N5 dash cancel combo takes about 3 seconds. Combined with his standard ICD mechanics, he swirls these hits on those combos. As you can see, the N1C combo lets you swirl more hits in a shorter amount of time than the N4C combo. However, this will drain your stamina quickly if you keep spamming it. So it's key to achieve a balance of doing charged attacks to proc swirls and switching to normals to save stamina. Saving stamina is also very important if you're playing a team that has very little healing capabilities as that stamina can be used to dodge and iframe enemy attacks instead. Moving on, let's look at Hazo's skill. This is where a core mechanic of his kit comes in, the declension stacks. His A1 talent states that stacks are gained whenever you trigger swirls. The number of stacks you have are indicated by these four markers beside Hazo. These stacks are basically meant to make your skill damage stronger. Hazo can either tap or hold his skill. If you tap his skill, he does his heart stopper strike right away and consumes whatever stacks you have. If you hold his skill, what happens depends on how many stacks you you have. If you don't have full stacks, holding it will make him charge his punch, which will cause you to gain stacks as long as he's charging it. Then, you can either let go to consume the current stacks or wait until he gets all 4 stacks. As long as Heizo has 4 stacks, the hold skill will automatically make him punch. The more declension stacks your skill consumes, the more damage gets added per stack. You can see the value in his talent multipliers. Additionally, if you have 4 stacks, he gets this conviction damage bonus which also adds on top of the 4 damage bonus stacks. And it's important to note that whether you tap or hold the skill, both of them will do the same damage based on the stacks consumed. The only difference is that his hold skill will make him charge up stacks if he doesn't have max stacks yet. His energy particle generation also favors max stacks. From my testing, it seems that at 1-2 to two stacks, he'll generate 2 particles. At 3 stacks, he'll generate either 2 or 3, but using 4 stacks guarantees 3 particles. 
So to maximize its damage, you want to use his skill when you have max declension stacks, or at least three, from swirling with his attacks or burst. It's because you don't want to have to charge too long to get stacks, as that wastes your time doing no damage and leaves him vulnerable to attacks. Because of these mechanics, there's a sort of satisfying rhythm to managing Heizo's moves with his declension stacks. It makes him feel all the more engaging to play. To continue, let's discuss his burst, and unfortunately, this is what I think is the most amiss part of Heizo's kit. Using his burst makes him kick this blast of animo damage to a target. Upon landing, it creates this suction that can pull enemies, so Heizo's burst is where his crowd control utility lies. Referring again to Sucrose, she does a good job of grouping and disabling enemies since both her skill and burst have crowd control mechanics. As for Heizo, his only source of crowd control comes from his burst, which would be okay if the payoff was worth it. However, at C0 and even level 90, it was unfortunately weak at pulling enemies and its AoE was also quite small. Small mobs are somewhat fine, but they have to be close enough in the first place. Then enemies like the Fatui, which can feel the effects of Venti, Kazuha, or Sucrose's suctions, just brush off Heizo. His C2 does say it enhances his burst's pull strength, so I didn't activate it yet because I want to experience his base C0 kit. If it does make it significantly better, then that's really good, but it's unfortunate that that feature is locked behind a constellation. It also has this mechanic called Wind Muster Iris, wherein if it comes into contact with an enemy that's affected with Pyro, Hydro, Cryo, or Electro, each enemy will explode and deal that respective elemental damage in a small AoE. It's kind of like Child's Riptide if you're familiar with it, which does quadratic damage. Unfortunately, this effect is also underwhelming. For for one, the Windmuster Iris damage multiplier is very low. It's also difficult to trigger elemental reactions with this since it's likely the enemies will all have the same element, so they won't react with one another. The biggest benefit I can see it doing so far is that it reapplies that element on the enemy. On the bright side, it has a low cost of 40 energy at least, and that cooldown is relatively short at 12 seconds. It's been so long since we last got a 40 cost burst, and it does get improvements with Constellation. Then, with his remaining passives, his A4 is an EM sharing mechanic. When his skill hits an opponent, he gives his teammates 80 EM for 10 seconds. It's definitely something, though obviously it's not at par with Sucrose's EM sharing utility. His last passive talent makes him decrease his team's stamina consumption by 20%. I think this is a small but helpful buff that enables his rapid feeling playstyle since he'll be able to dodge, iframe, and zip around the battlefield more frequently. For talent leveling priorities, I would prioritize his skill, the normals, as he'll be using those most frequently. Although Swirls don't rely on talent levels, his talents are worth leveling since he also relies on raw animo damage for team damage contribution. And those are Heizo's kit and talents. As you can see, Heizo is focused as an on-field DPS and driver. All in all, Heizo is a good, cohesive unit with fun gameplay. By virtue of being an animal unit that can hold the VV, he's already useful enough and fortunately, he's also a decent DPS. It's just that he's up against tough competition. If we have to compare, I think Sucrose just has more utility and team synergy. While they're both good on-field drivers, Sucrose has the upper hand for her very strong EM sharing buff that reaction teams love and better crowd controlling. She also has a wider selection of optimal team comps since she can fulfill both an on-field and quick swap role, whereas Heizo's optimal playstyle is focused as an on-field driver. But what does Heizo have over Sucrose? He punches and kicks and has an engaging stacking mechanic, which some will find more satisfying to play. He also has more flexibility in his builds, because unlike Sucrose, who wants to go full EM, Heizo is very viable on either an EM or attack crit build. Plus, he can make use of many catalysts in the current selection. I'll discuss these points soon. Still, having both is always good, and if you do, at least this frees up Sucrose in the half of Spiral Abyss. At C0, he also feels well put together already. The biggest improvement I'd have wanted is a stronger burst suction by default. Aside from that, I think even without constellations, Hazel's already fun and viable to use, which is good for a 4 star. Here are my quick thoughts on his major constellations. C1 increases his attack speed and lets him get a stack by switching on field. 
That's a nice quality of life change for faster gameplay and requiring shorter combos to get max stacks. C2 increases the pull effect and duration of his burst. As long as it noticeably improves his pull, then this is also a nice constellation. C4 makes him get an energy refunding mechanic which is helpful for letting him get away with less ER on top of his already low ER requirements. C6 gives his skill added crit rate and damage based on his stacks, also good to make his heartstopper strike hit harder. Since he is a 4 star meant to stack up constellations, I'll be making a follow up video that will focus on activating his constellations one by one to demonstrate how much they do to improve his kit. Now let's talk about how to build Heizo. For Heizo's artifact sets, if you're an early AR player, you don't need to concern yourself with set bonuses, though these sets are nice if you happen to have them. Still, the end goal is none other than the Viridescent Venerer set. Its elemental shred and swirl buff are simply the best for both Heizo and your team, so get ready to share your existing pieces or farm new ones. The good news about farming for Heizo's build is that, unlike Sucrose who just really wants to stack a full EM build, Heizo has more flexibility in his artifact main stats. He can opt for a full EM build or attack sands, animal damage goblet, crit circlet build, or even some form of hybrid which makes farming for pieces easier. It's like Venti who performs well with either build too. This is great because say you have both Sucrose and Heizo on your account and you have limited EM viridescent venerer pieces, Sucrose is a higher priority unit to get those pieces, while you can give the attack and crit pieces to Heizo. This would also be true if maybe you got Kazuha on this banner. For the substats, you generally want EM, attack, and ER. Crit stats are also welcome, more so if you're aiming for an ADC build, in which case aim for a 50 to 100 crit ratio. To burst once per rotation, a safe target ER stat is 120 to 130% since he'll be played mainly on field and will likely absorb HP particles from enemies. If you're a more adventurous type, there are two more full sets that you could build Hazo with. Just keep in mind these can only be used in very niche team selections. Given an electro reaction team, the simplest being a taser team, Hazo as a driver will be able to proc electro charges. Doing so will proc the skill cooldown reduction effect of the Thundering Fury set. And since Hazo's skill punch is a focal part of his kit, being able to use it more often is good news. Not to mention it will generate more particles for Hazo as well. One last very niche set option to try out is Blizzard Strayer. Since Hazo is viable for an attack crit build, he can, in a freeze team, take a advantage of all the crit rate from the 4 piece blizzard strayer and just stack attack and crit damage on his weapon and artifact stats. Due to him being flexible with his artifacts, Heizo's weapon options are likewise flexible. Let's start with the EM build choices. There's the sacrificial fragments which, when procced, will reset Heizo's skill cooldown. Again, Heizo does like his skill a lot, meaning he'll benefit from sac frag. Do note though that when sac frag resets his skill cooldown, get the stacks first before using it again. The Widsith is also a great option especially at high refinements. The main caveat is the RNG and cooldown time. Thankfully, even if you don't get the EM buff, Heizo still makes use of either the attack or elemental damage buff even on an EM focused build. The Favonius Codex, while not an EM weapon, is a great option for Heizo for adding team battery utility and giving Heizo all the ER he'll need. Just get a few crit rate substats from his artifacts, at least he'll have a lot of time on field to proc the effect. Thrilling Tales is the cheap but powerful 3-star catalyst support weapon, as long as Heizo has a teammate that can utilize that attack buff, which he'll most likely have anyway. It makes him deal lower personal damage, but the trade-off is a huge buff to your teammate's damage. Heizo also has more free-to-play choices. Hakushin Ring is a great craftable weapon, but it pushes Heizo on electro reaction teams. Just remember that if you have teammates that snapshot their abilities, like Beidou or Fischl, he'll want to trigger the Hakushin Ring's passive first so that they can snapshot the damage buff. The Mappa Mare is also craftable and more viable for general use with a good base attack and elemental damage bonus, though its EM substat is quite mediocre. The Magic Guide is always in surplus, its base attack is very low, but it has a higher EM stat than Mappa Mare and is also good on taser teams. For attack crit Hazo builds, here are my recommendations. All 5-star catalysts except for the donut are 
viable DPS weapons. The Skyward Atlas is a great generalist catalyst that gives elemental damage bonus with no condition required and has that extra damage proc along normal attacks. An ADC build will help that damage proc hit even harder too. The Kagura's Verity, aside from that juicy crit damage stat, has a skill buffing effect. However, due to Hazo's 10 second skill cooldown, the Kagura's passive will have a longer wind up time until Hazo can get the full buff. The Lost Prayers can help with Hazo's crit ratio, but remember that its passive stacks start from zero whenever you swap Hazo out and in, and so won't be maximized. Finally, the Memory of Dust is also still viable. However, it requires a shield to be fully maximized, and Hazo's common team templates won't guarantee that. Among 4-star weapons, Hazo's best options are the Widsith, which also fits in an attack crit build and at high refines can be even better value than a 5-star. Then there's the Solar Pearl, which you can get from the battle pass if you're a low spender. The Solar Pearl is also what Hazo was using in his character demo and thankfully, its passive makes sense for his kit, buffing his normals, skill damage, and burst damage. The free-to-play event weapons Dodoko Tails and Oathsworn Eye are very viable options if you don't don't have anything else, but I would prefer Dodoko Tails for its more offensive utility, and Hazo won't need that much ER from the Oathsworn's effect. Now, let's discuss Hazo's team synergy. Generally speaking, you can also slot in Hazo wherever you need a VV resistance shredder animo unit, which are a lot of teams. But if you have other animo options, it's likely that they'll be better choices, especially if you're looking for an off-field animo support. Still, here are some top team templates that I think Hazo can shine in. Hazo is a good alternative to Sucrose in a taser team, wherein he will drive the abilities of Hydro and Electro teammates. In this team, Hazo will generally prefer a full EM build for higher reaction damage, but he still works great with an attack crit build. Though so there are notable cons to choosing him. He doesn't share as much EM as Sucrose, but he tries to make up for it by adding his own personal animo damage. Sucrose has better grouping abilities which taser teams appreciate. However, he at least has a more unique playstyle and this means he can run Sucrose on another team. Next are freeze teams. One nice thing about Hazo in a freeze team is that his punches don't shatter the freeze, so he'll help maintain the freeze instead of disrupt it. Freeze teams also help compensate for the crowd control that Hazo lacks. Running him with Kaya was a particularly fun combo as he carries Kaya's icicles in fistfights. Hazo in this team can ideally equip attack crit stats since freeze teams don't benefit from EM as much. Finally, you can always slot in Hazo with a national core of Bennett, Singcho, and Shengling and allow him to drive. As an animo support though, Sucrose can provide a higher damage ceiling. But in this team, a Hazo attack crit build can benefit from Bennett's buff and he can drive Singcho's rain swords. Honestly, his best teams feel a bit limited right now since other animo units have more flexible uses. However, I do think I can afford some more optimism on Hazo's future teams. By default, being an animo unit makes him still a valuable choice for elemental characters and teams that want a viridescent venerer animo shredder. And there's still a lot of room for him to grow as we get new units that can synergize with Hazo's on-field driving role. And so that's the case of Hazo. If you got Hazo or if you tried him out, I would love to know in the comments what you think of him. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel for more Genshin Impact guides and content, and I will see you all soon. Take care!